and welcome back to the first ever episode of Your Social Health. We're here for your checkup with Dr. Mike. <laughs> Dr. Mike, I have the prescription you need. Uh, is it more Twitter? It's, it's, more, it's more everything. It's more Twitter, it's more LinkedIn, it's find your followers. All right, well, we are seriously talking to people today about, um, a lot of people ask, how do I become more whatever? They want to become more active, they want to become more influential. It's always more something. Rarely is it less. So what are some of the tips that you give people on how to evaluate themselves as a professional online? Okay, so I'd say the first tip is going to be don't hide behind a corporate veil. Ooh. Be out there. So many people want to start up mini corporate handles and have a thousand different handles for one company or one organization. Don't do it. Right. Establish your own brand. Right. Okay, let's talk about that because Mike is in a particular case to know this because I'm going to out him. He is often forced behind the corporate veil. He is the voice of at Solid Fire. And before we worked together, he was the voice of at Cisco DC. So you know quite a lot about when you have to have that corporate voice, the sort of noun, verb, noun, with just that little bit of edge and sass versus being an individual. So when, when we talk to people, what's some of the strategy in explaining why not to just go all corporate? And, and frankly, you can't just go all individuals either. You have to have a little bit of both. So what's your, both. what do you pitch there? Uh, first pitch is always the statistic that never dies. People tend to follow on average, on, for Twitter at least, a maximum of about five companies. Oh, period. Wow, just five. So they're probably gonna that. pick one from each industry and they're gonna pick their five favorite. They might be adding and deleting others. So maybe their own company and maybe not another one. Exactly, and, yeah. companies they, they buy stuff from frequently usually. Right, right. So I'd say, yeah, the maximum people is five. People will follow thousands of individuals oh, because yeah, yeah. people like to connect with other people. That's why they're being social, not just to be marketed to, which is what a lot of corporate handles are used for. Right, right. So. Whenever somebody asks you, is it a good idea if I make a new hand corporate handle for blah? It's I would favorite. say, I know this no. <laughs> you have your own handle. Don't make another one. You don't need a separate work handle and a personal handle. Combine them into one. Be a professional. Balance your content so you're talking about your professional life and what you're doing. And also your, your personal interests, what you're good at. Doesn't matter if it's poker. Doesn't matter if it's running. Doesn't matter if it's movies. Promote yourself on what you're all about. People well, are going to find you interesting, and they're going to find your work interesting. That's why they want to follow you. Well, and one of my favorite analogies you use with that is that uh, corporate handles are like puppies. They're really cute when you first set them up. But they are, and then they make messes, and then they're hard to clean up, and then you have to grow the followers and constantly <laughs> produce new tweets and new things to talk about every single day. And I can tell you from experience, more than anyone else, that is very, very hard, especially managing multiple corporate handles. It's it's a pain, it, and it comes to be a chore, and it's not fun anymore, and that's why you did it in the first place. So it's not fun, you shouldn't be doing it. Absolutely. So. On that, we were talking a little bit about metrics at the top. So sure. give me some of your two or three places that I can go for my social health. So when people ask me, but do you really make a difference? Or how popular are you? Or they just want to evaluate themselves or have a way to explain it to their corporate structure, maybe. Sure. So I'm an Excel nerd. But my favorite one by far is analytics.twitter.com. It's free. Go in there. It'll give you all the stats. You can download a whole PDF and not just see your engagements, not just see your retweets. You can figure out, oh, were those engagements? picture clicks that people wanted to see more of the picture I was sharing. You can look at what time were my posts the best. You can look at what types of content do people want from me. Do they like the videos I'm sharing? Do they like the personal stuff I'm sharing? Do they like the how-to stuff I'm sharing? Figure out what people are liking and what they're not liking and adjust your content to fit what your followers like. Or you could just take the opposite approach and just keep tweeting what you like and just learn. At least you know what people are gonna reciprocate from and how you're gonna make your biggest impact. Right, sort of an A-B testing. Or the thing I always tell people is, um, look at your last 10 tweets, and if you wouldn't follow yourself, you're boring. Just it's if true. you wouldn't follow you, that's a pretty simple test. And and not that we all don't end up sharing some things, not every moment is our war and peace, but uh, just uh, relatively speaking, you should have a balance of, you know, a lot of different things. You and can share content, you can engage, you can. Yeah. One thing I ask for every tweet that you, or every post that you're gonna put is we're all marketing to human beings. These are, these are actual personal accounts. If you can ask yourself, what did that post make you feel? And you can say, it made me feel this emotion, it was great. That's what you should be doing. You should try to drive in action, whether it's driving to a website, getting people to just be entertained, mm -hmm. inspire that emotion, and success will follow. Wait, and I love the other one when people, I have had somebody say to me once, you know, I've had a Twitter account for six months and I haven't sent a single personal tweet. And I was like, wow, you must be fun at dinner parties. <laughs> 
because I, I don't think it's when people talk about their social health or being a professional. Yeah, they feel social. the need to be only professional and only prim and proper and all that kind of stuff, and that's not what social is about. You need to let loose, be yourself, be interesting, and don't just be a you know corporate mouth, as some people like to say. Yeah, absolutely. That's well, we can have the fight about prescribed tweets another time. <laughs> But uh, what are some of the other tools? Like, let's talk about LinkedIn. So that's the other one I know people look at and yep. go, okay, that's, I'm, I'm comfortable there. How can they assess their health? How can they get more engaged? Uh, right in the middle, LinkedIn built-in analytics. You don't need any special tools. You don't need any subscriptions or anything else. Just go right to your LinkedIn profile. You can see who's looking at your blog. You can see how many people have clicked on it. Mm -hmm. There's all that analytics is all right in there. You just have to dive in. So. I know you do this on a spreadsheet because we talk about this every month, but as an individual, how often do you think somebody should check in, uh, you know, I, I guess people maybe who are growing their business, and I get asked this a lot too, I think you can get paranoid if you check every day. Sometimes you get in a cycle of like, how many more followers, how many more followers? No, no, no. I'd say once a week is great, I'd say at a once a month at a bare minimum. I, whatever you got to do at the beginning of every month, set some time on your calendar and just crank through, look at all the analytics, see what did great so it can inspire you for the next month to come. I like that. So any other uh, tips you've got for our audience? And uh, Let's see. Uh, just, just post more. Don't be scared. Like I said, a lot of people are so scared. I don't know what to tweet. Yes, you do. You talk to people every day. Tweet something you talk to a friend about. Well, I'll ask you, what are your, because obviously I follow Mike both professionally and socially, what are some of the things that you like to engage or what has surprised you? Things that you share and conversations you've engaged in that you're surprised have taken a life of their own? Uh, I'd say the ones that take the life of their own are the... Uh, from the corporate handle, uh, I do a lot of listening as well, so I find out when every time anyone's talking about our business, uh, the, great, the greatest opportunities, my best successes come from when I'm able to jump in a conversation, get people connected to others they can talk about, both on and offline, and uh, they can get business done, close deals. I, I love that. I think people forget that, that it is public in some ways, and they think about just a call and response versus the ability to knit together this broader fabric. Sure, yeah. Someone's just asking, oh, how, anybody have any experience, good experience with this product? And I can just jump in yeah. un, unprovoked, unasked, and just say, hey, thanks for asking a question about us. Connect with this great person. I know they're going to get talked to the right person, and they, they get this wow moment surprise. Oh, this company really cares about me already, and I, I don't even know them yet. Yeah, no, we, the other analogy we've used before is if you are in charge of a corporate handle um, and you do this kind of active listening and answer as the corporate handle, people are as surprised as if a vending machine has talked to them. Because exactly. we realize how many companies, and particularly in our space, don't man or woman the, the, the troops in a way that, that can answer. And even if you do it a little bit a day, a few answers and engagements, um, all of us who fly a lot or travel are so pleased when we get that high level of customer service. Mm -hmm. Ironically, that industry is really staffed appropriately. Sure. But I think in the tech world, we're, we've gotten a little crock pot. You know, fix it and forget it. And a big reason answer, for that is the measuring. People say, yeah, oh, yeah. what's the ROI of liking a tweet, liking a customer's tweet? And I'm going to say, you're never going to feel that because it's going to be inside. Yeah. You can't measure someone's feelings, you know? I love this, I stole it from Gary Vee. It's uh, show me the ROI of your mother. Mm -hmm. You can't prove that number, you're never going to, but it's always still gonna be the right thing to do. You need to just do it anyways, regardless of what you can prove and what ROI you can show on a spreadsheet. Absolutely, so that's it from us. That's a little uh, quick how-to behind the scenes of what we do, um, both as uh, corporate and as individuals. Professionals, yeah. yeah. Until next time. Thanks for watching, one and only Mike T. Any other questions, DM me, happy to talk back to you. <laughs>